and welcome. We are having breakfast for dinner tonight and that's how we're going to start off this video. The recipe for this calls for half and half. I didn't have any so if you mix milk and heavy cream together that's basically half and half. To that I'm adding eggs and I'm going to mix this mixture together. Now I am cutting this in half the recipe and I will have the link below for the full recipe. This is so different and interesting. It's not like anything I've ever made before. So I was real intrigued with it and knew I wanted to try it. So I have my sausage browned up here and it calls for bacon. Um, I used the little real bacon pieces. It calls for cheese. So I had white cheddar and regular cheddar. I shredded that up. You mix this mixture together and what we're gonna do is make breakfast enchiladas. So this here is the filling. Now like I said, I'm cutting this in half. The recipe says it makes eight. So I cut everything in half knowing that I would come out with four and I thought this would be just the right amount. And actually after I made this, I wish I had just made the eight because we could have eaten on these for breakfast the next couple of days. But uh, I'll do that the next time. I know they would be really good as leftovers. But anyway, I tried to distribute this filling as evenly as I could. I'm gonna get these rolled up and I'm gonna place them in an eight by eight glass baking dish that I have sprayed with cooking spray. I can't help but notice you coming down the street Smiling so dearly at everyone you meet After you have your enchiladas in the pan, you are going to cover them with the mixture of egg and half and half and you're just going to let that completely soak into these uh, breakfast enchiladas and then of course you top with cheese and I decided to go in with a little bit of this jalapeno salt just because I had that and I thought it would be good on there and it was you could do a little parsley you could do nothing at all and then you can either have this in your fridge overnight or you can bake it right away I chose to bake it right away and these were so absolutely delicious a big hit James and I both love them they were very filling in fact James did not even finish all of his and he ate uh, his leftovers for breakfast the next morning I just served these up with some tater tots they were so so good and I think they would be great as an overnight dish as well how easy that would be to get these ready in the refrigerator and then pop up in the oven the next day might be a, a good thing for upcoming holidays maybe for a Christmas morning type of meal anyhow be sure and look below to check out this recipe no other could enchant me darling like you do I've just got eyes for you I've just got eyes Look at this sink full of garden goodness. We've got okra, we have cucumbers, and we have banana peppers. Abigail at Gutter, our son and his wife, their garden just did so great this year. She has really um, shared lots of yummy good things with us and we are grateful for it. So this is fresh okra. Um, one of my very, very favorite foods. I've loved okra since I was a kid. My dad always grew okra and um, when we've gardened in the past we've grown okra so I just basically got it all washed cut the tips off and I'm just slicing it up here I am going to make some fried okra to go along with dinner tonight
have now added in cornmeal and flour and I'm just going to give it a real good mix trying to make sure all of my little okra pieces are coated in the cornmeal and flour mixture and then I'm just going to fry these up in some bacon grease. I'm going to use my slotted spoon. I'm going to really kind of shake it a little bit back and forth to make sure I get rid of any of the loose flour and cornmeal because you don't want that all in the bottom of your pan. So just kind of make sure you're getting the okra without a whole lot of the extra flour and cornmeal. doing more of a shallow fry so after I got those turned over there the first time I saw that I needed a little bit more bacon grease in there so I just scooped out a little bit more and just kind of kind of put it here and there throughout the pan give it a, just a little bit more bacon grease in there to continue frying up Remember back a couple weeks ago, I showed you, uh, I bought several packages of these Eckridge smoked sausages. This was the four pepper. This is so quick to get on the table. It fries up in no time. So it's a really good uh, thing to keep in your fridge for a quick meal. And you can see here, we've just got complete garden goodness. This is all from Gunner and Abigail's garden. We're so grateful for it. The corn out of their garden this year was so sweet and delicious. This was just a garden feast tonight. We loved every minute of it. Moving on to another night's dinner, we are having spaghetti. I just needed to use up a green pepper that I had and I had just a little bit of a red onion left. I decided to go ahead and just fry those up together and then I just put in my ground beef, fried that up together, and then added in my jarred pasta sauce. Can't get much easier than that. Uh, the peppers and onions do give it some additional flavor. And we just needed a quick and easy meal. As you can tell by how I sound, I'm still a little under the weather, but spaghetti is always good, always tastes delicious, and it's quick. I had some Trader Joe's focaccia bread that I'm continuing to work through. And so this was all we had left and I just um, toasted that up in the air fryer. So it was a very quick and easy meal. All right, moving on to another really quick and easy dinner idea. This is one we had using these Southern style chicken bites. It was my very first time to buy these from Walmart and they are supposed to be um, similar to Chick-fil-A. It has all the instructions on the back. I chose to go with the air fryer. So I filled my air fryer um, up, which was about half a bag, and I just cooked those per the bagged instructions. And we just decided that we were gonna have a real big loaded salad with chicken on top. Years ago, I used to like to get a salad at Cracker Barrel. I think it was called the Southern Fried Chicken Salad was really really good so that's kind of what we had in mind of course you know all restaurants and uh, places serve usually a salad with some sort of chicken on top so you get the idea there I earlier in the day had prepped some veggies I'm just using the romaine uh, salad bag from Walmart I have some red peppers some cucumber I boiled up some um, 
potato potatoes I boiled up some eggs earlier in the day We've got cucumber red onion just all of our favorites of course when you're making your own salad that's the beauty of it you just put what you have or what you enjoy the most so I just really loaded these up these are like a big pasta bowl here that I'm making these in so honestly neither one of us finished our salad because it's just so easy to pack it all in there and then it's more than you can actually eat so I'm just building this up here and we're just gonna enjoy this really yummy salad for dinner it's actually still been really really warm here so this was really a nice refreshing dinner and yes I'm putting some cottage cheese on the side just kind of salad bar style I guess Now for my thoughts on the chicken as I'm putting this on here. Um, I've heard mixed reviews about it. My thoughts, it was good. It wasn't the best I've ever had. I honestly don't know that I'll buy it again. We'll definitely finish the bag. Like I said, it was good. But it's about $12 a bag and I don't know. It definitely doesn't taste like Chick-fil-A. Maybe a little bit of the seasoning or something on there. but. Um, don't let this hinder you from buying it. You might love it. It just wasn't my very, very favorite. I probably won't buy it again. Um, but I'm just doctoring up the top here. We both had some honey mustard dressing. I put a little bit of Greek on mine and James loves Parmesan on his. Like I said, this was a really, really yummy, very filling meal. All right, I saved the sweetest thing to last. I am starting here with a refrigerated pie crust. This is probably the Aldi one. I'm just unrolling that on a piece of parchment paper on my baking sheet. I am making a peach galette. Now, if you've never made a galette, you'll see how quick and easy they are. I am using some white sugar and some cinnamon to make a little bit of a cinnamon sugar mixture here that's gonna top my fruit and I'm using fresh peaches. I had some fresh ones that needed to be used and I was thinking, you know, what can I make with these with the amount that I have? Also, I didn't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So I have made a galette um, many times in the past. I wouldn't say many, several times in the past, but it's been a long, long time. Um, but it just popped into my mind. I was like, okay, this is about the right amount of fruit I have for a galette. So basically, it's just a... Uh, some sort of pastry on the bottom with some fruit or a savory filling, either one, on the top, and it just gets folded over. It's very rustic um, and very easy. So you can see here, these are just my fresh peaches with nothing else on them. They're just peeled, and I just kind of went around and made um, the base the size that I wanted knowing that I was going to be folding those edges over and then I just plopped in the rest of those peaches in the middle. Now you come in with the cinnamon sugar mixture so you're just going to generously top that. I will have a recipe linked below you can follow um, if you would like to try to make this. So after you get your fruit and your cinnamon sugar then you just simply take these edges and fold them over. Very rustic, very free form. Just kind of hold on to them all as best you can until you kind of get them folded and then they'll pretty much stay together. You can see here, that's my little final piece there. I'm gonna smush it all down and that's just about it with the crust. Now I'm gonna go in with some water um, and just brush along the edges of this pie crust. You can use heavy cream. You could do, um, sure, an egg mixture would work as well, but water browns it up just as good. Next, I'm going to add in, well, here we see just a little bit more cinnamon sugar on the crust, and then you just want to put some pats of butter all on top of your fruit and put this thing in the oven. It's as easy as that. The 
this looks so beautiful to me. I don't know why I'm always drawn to something that looks a little bit more rustic as opposed to something that looks so aesthetically perfectly beautiful, if you know what I'm saying. I just love something about uh, dessert that looks like this and it tasted even better than it looked. I just served it with some vanilla ice cream and this was really a great Sunday evening treat. So thanks so much for watching the video you guys as always I appreciate every time you stop by my channel if you enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you've not say a little prayer that I don't sound like this the next time you hear me on a video I would appreciate that so much I need to get over this and be well but I always appreciate you guys coming by thanks again see you the next time